Did I feel that I'm entitled? Not at all. And the breakfast was anything but good. So I was very frustrated. I was like, I'm a paying customer and this is nonsense. And I literally posted my experience on Instagram review. If you want some polished scripted story, you should check out other channels. And this is when things went really bad. Ooh, ooh, ooh. what's up? Message the captain. No idea how they do that. So they wouldn't serve me anymore. No water for me, no drinks. It got even worse. Get him to stop filming because we don't want this on the internet. Said, no, you cannot film anymore. It's like, is this how you deal with criticism? I felt humiliated. Just like this. I have to see the CEO, the head of the company, the man in charge, the captain in command is totally fine with the fact that you pay for something that you never get. So, hello and welcome to another flight review and today I'm sharing my experience flying Malaysia Airlines from KL to London on their brand new Airbus A350. Um, but it was probably the worst flight of my life. Um, and it wasn't really a pleasant experience. And before we get into it, I really encourage you to watch my recent review of Malaysia Airlines. Um, I flew on their 737 from Manila to KL. It's been a wonderful flight and it really shows you what the airline is capable of. Um, however, my flight to London was an absolute nightmare. I used to live in Malaysia myself. Um, I love that country. It's very close to my heart. Uh, one of my best friends are Malaysians. So um, it's not about the country. It's not about anything else. It's about my customer, my consumer experience. And it's probably something that can happen to you as well. So I want to share an honest review with you, my honest opinion on what it was like to travel with Malaysian Airlines. And unfortunately, it was a very, very terrible experience. All right, so prior the flight, a few weeks prior to the flight, I got in touch with the head of social media at Malaysia Airlines asking for permission to film because I wanted to review the flight. And after my Jet Airways experience where the crew was very upset that I was filming, I thought it would be a good idea to get in touch so nobody gets offended and nobody's privacy gets violated. He said, all right, that's good, no problem. Uh, and if you want, you can even get a pre-boarding. Um, however, that never worked out because of some pure miscommunication. However, um, this guy, his name is Iguan, is probably the most unprofessional person I've ever worked with in the industry. I know a lot of people in that industry and I can tell from my personal experience that he is taking his job very seriously. So I got on the flight and the first impression of the crew is that everybody was extremely unfriendly, not a single smile. Everybody there on that flight seemed to hate it. If you don't want to be a cabin crew, you can't be bothered, and, uh, but you brand yourself as such a hospitable airline, then something is wrong here. So by the end of the day, I think nobody deserved to wear this beautiful uniform because I have had um, greater flights and better experience with Malaysia Airlines before. During the boarding process, I walked through my seat and I passed by another passenger and he said, hey, are you Josh? One of my subscribers. Um, his name was Mel Wilder, M Melvin, Melvinder, sorry if I pronounce it wrong. And he exactly after the flight, we had another chat and he agreed that the crew was absolutely terrible. He said, very unfriendly. Uh, they couldn't be bothered like doing their job, literally. And he said by the end of the day, he always prefers flying uh, Air Asia. And so do I, because the crew is so much more passionate about their jobs. Um, so yeah, he also, when he arrived in London, his, his baggage, his bag was broken. Uh, it was damaged by Malaysia Airlines or some handler on the ground. And to date, uh, Malaysia Airlines still refuses to compensate him. Because we're still in touch, maybe you should follow him on Instagram. Great guy. Um, very honest guy and he just had exactly the same experience um, as me. So which just backs it up that I'm not making anything up here or that I'm fussy or that I feel that I'm entitled. Not at all. Got to my seat. Um, I had one of those special seats uh, next to the emergency exit where you don't have a seat in front of you, which leaves you without uh, um, entertainment. So entertainment is in the armrest. 
and um, but you have no storage space, which is a bit uncomfortable for me because I always have my gear. And then after some time, the passenger in front of me, she just dropped her back literally in that space where I'm supposed to rest my legs. So I was left with not much. We take off, um, breakfast service would start, would start and the breakfast was anything but good. As you could tell, I could literally cut squares out of the omelette because it would glue to the bottom of this aluminium tray it was served in. And also the tray, it was where the whole thing was sitting on, was extremely sticky. As you can see, it was dirty. It was very filthy. Um, as well, there was some weird liquid in that extra tray where the marmalade was put. And it was just overall, the, the food was lu lukewarm and it wasn't enjoyable at all. After the breakfast, I thought, okay, it's time to get catch up on some movies. I have 14 hours and um, I think the in-flight entertainment of Malaysia Airlines isn't too bad. So I got uh, the screen out and I started to start it and it was just black for, for a while, nothing happened. And then it set loading for the entire time. So I tried, I tried to push all the buttons, it wouldn't work. So I asked the crew to fix it because it's a brand new airplane, it's an Airbus A350, which has only been in service for six months. So you probably just have to reset it, um, no big deal, and it goes. So I told the crew, the crew said, okay. Um, after some time, I followed up because you still didn't take care of it. And she said, okay, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll take care of it. Nothing happened at all. So I was very frustrated. I was like, I'm a paying customer and this is nonsense. What is this? What is this all about? You know, I can't sit there 14 hours and just look out the window. The airplane offers in-flight Wi-Fi. So I got my phone and I literally posted my experience on Instagram saying it's only halfway through the flight and I can always say this is the most disappointing flight of the year. Very unfriendly crew in brackets. Where did the amazing amazing Malaysian hospitality go, broken in-flight entertainment, which leaves me without entertainment, dreadful food has been served, filthy tray. So I literally shared my experience because this is what I do. I give you an authentic review. If you want some polished scripted story, you should check out other channels. So what I do is I'm going to show you the real experience and what it's like. So I shared that with my followers on Instagram. <laughs> this is how it started. This is where where everything went downhill. Um, I was sitting there in my, in my seat, not knowing what to do. And then the purser came, not the cabin manager, the purser, the guy who was in charge of the economy class cabin. And he was standing there. There was two other passengers ne next, next to me. And he wouldn't even say, excuse me, sir, or whatever. He's like, who do you message? And I was like, whoa, 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 what's up? And he's like, who do you message? And I didn't get it. I didn't know what this was all about, but I could tell that he was clearly upset. And he, like, for a third time, he was like, who do you message? And I was like, hold on, okay? I'm gonna get out and we can go over there where the lavatories is um, and we can have a normal conversation and we don't have to get in the other passengers involved. I felt like a complete idiot in front of like everyone. He was like almost shouting at me. And I said, okay, what's the problem? So the captain told me you message someone. Like my seat was, I think, 27K or something like that. He said, yeah, 27K is messaging someone. I had no idea what he was talking about. All I did was post something on Instagram, which he probably referenced to, but um, yeah, he was, uh, he said I messaged someone, so I denied because I didn't message anyone. So he left, um, knowing that my in-flight entertainment still wasn't working and he was still wasn't bothered to do anything about it. I have a friend or I have that one guy at, at Malaysia Airlines and I'm gonna um, show that a message here. He said, hello Josh, because I messaged him asking what is going wrong and why I'm being attacked by the purser. And he said, hello Josh, our head of customer experience read your post and had sent a message to the captain to see how we could make your flight more comfortable. You did not do anything wrong at all. And I apologize if it makes you feel uncomfortable, which I was, I was extremely uncomfortable when you get told off in front of everyone. Um, this is very humiliating experience, you know, and I don't wish anybody to go through this because I felt like a complete criminal just for sharing my experience. Criticism some, is something that we all accept and are willing to learn from. Can I please ask what has transpired so far? So literally what happened, somebody at Malaysia Airlines saw my post and 
um, message the captain. No idea how they do that. Maybe the captains, they use Wi-Fi on the flight as well, or um, they got a message somehow. But this is literally what happened. Um, so the captain, instead of um, sorting out, maybe coming to me and asking what is wrong, he passed the message on to the cabin manager. And the cabin manager was like, well, I can't be bothered either. Let's get the purser to do it. So the purser came to me and was trying to find out why do I have such a bad experience, which leaves me a bit speechless because they knew that my in-flight entertainment wasn't working and they didn't do anything about it. But this is how Malaysia Airlines treats their customers. You know, the captain can't be bothered, the cabin manager can't be bothered. So send somebody else to sort out that issue. But in the end of the day, they still wouldn't try to improve my flight because my friend said, how can we improve your flight? But nothing was done about it. And it was overall just weird. It even got better. It got better. With a tray of water to the cabin and it would completely ignore me. So they wouldn't serve me anymore. No water for me, no drinks. Um, I was completely ignored. I also not very passionate. I'm a paying customer and I didn't do anything wrong. I just shared my experience as anyone else can do that on the internet, you know, and this is how they deal with criticism is, uh, it's unheard of. I've never, I've never came across. So then it got even worse. You think it's, it has been, it has been reached a critical point. No, it got even worse. So, Three hours prior landing in London, um, the dinner service or lunch, late lunch would start. And as you all know, I had the permission to fly, uh, to, to film, to record my experience from uh, that Iguan guy who then probably communicated with the crew and said, get him to stop filming because we don't want this on the internet. So I had my camera. Uh, and the service would start and then as you can see the purser, the guy who told me off, said no, you cannot film anymore. It's done. It's over. We don't want this. Um, it's over. Did you just realize how bad you perform and you don't want anyone to see this? Oh, and he said he didn't want to serve me anymore unless I stopped filming. I said okay, switch the camera off, Got to try, got the food. This time the food was actually good. In all fairness, I really enjoyed that dish. I felt extremely uncomfortable. I feel, I felt humiliated. I felt like they want, don't want me there. They want me off that flight. It was just very sad. It was just like, I was, I felt like a criminal. I felt like I'd done something wrong. And I've never felt that way before that I was treated in, in such manner. We landed in, in London and I was, I was the happiest person to get off that flight and in the jet bridge there was a guy standing there holding a sign with my name on it and I was just like I might be in trouble <laughs> now. What's gonna happen? Are they gonna beat me up? Are they gonna like take my camera away? Uh, however the station manager of Malaysia Airlines wanted to meet me. They must have communicated it that far and we had a coffee and in all fairness he was a very nice guy and he apologized and he was just wondering what went wrong. A few days later I got a few emails like um, apologizing. By the way this guy Iguan who actually caused all those troubles never got back to me. He kind of disappeared. He never apologized once. So he, he must have been such a coward that he sent all his colleagues. So they got in touch, they apologized, they called. I got in touch with the CEO of um, Malaysia Airlines just to share my experience, how it was and how, how disappointed, without an agenda. I just wanted to tell him, listen, um, because I, I'm a huge fan of Malaysia Airlines. So I got in touch with him, I sent him an email. What I got was just another template of apologies, apologizing for what happened. You know, if you're an airline and you want to re renew or refresh your templates of um, excuses, I can send all that email to you. So get in touch with me. My email is down in the description. So I replied to the email of, what's his name? Isham Ismail, the CEO of, of Malaysia Airlines. And this is just Elsa. He just represents, he's in charge. He's the man in command. And this is just also how he deals with things. So he doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about his customers. He doesn't care whether you have a good experience or not. 
He had a template, he sends that, and this is it. Just like this. I replied and I said, you know, all I've been given over the last few days was just messages with apologi uh, apologizing to me and how sorry they felt, but nothing was done about it. But you all, you're still happy by the end of the day, Mr. Ismail, Ismail, I hope I pronounced your name right, but he's still happy by the end of the day to walk away with my money in his pocket for service that was dreadful. No in-flight entertainment, food was terrible. I was treated in the worst, in the most terrible manner. And that's not something I've paid for. You know, there's many others, you, who could exactly go through the same. As Melvinder, Mel Melvin, Melvin, Melvinder, I uh, got never refunded for his bag that was broken. I paid for something that I never got, but even the CEO is fine with this. You have to see that the CEO, the head of the company, the man in charge, the captain in command is totally fine with the fact that you pay for something that you never get. He is totally fine with this. And this, this shows how, how little he cares about you, me, and all the other passengers, customers, customers who pay for service they never receive. And I said, look, you are happy to still walk away with my money in your pocket and you're totally fine with it. And then after this, he said, okay, I am I'm happy to refund you for your flight. Money that I still haven't received today and not gonna claim um, because for me, it's not about the money, uh, but it's the way I was humiliated and treated by this airline. And an airline slogan that says, uh, Malaysian hospitality starts with us. Or this is where Malaysian hospitality starts. This is not only an insult to the people of Malaysia, but this is an insult to the entire country of Malaysia because Malaysia is a country all about hospitality and great warm-hearted people. But nobody lives that in the management. Even a top manager, the CEO, doesn't live up to those words, to those standards. And this is a warning sign for me where I say, if the man who makes the decision doesn't live up to that slogan, then he shouldn't be in charge of such a beautiful airline, which used to be one of the best airlines in the world. They were known for their crew and how amazing they, they are. And now they don't even care about you, your experience and how you feel. If this is Malaysian hospitality, then good night, Malaysia Airlines, because um, this is very far from what this country is all about. And this is just my experience on Malaysia Airlines. It could happen to you, it could happen to anyone. You know, so I would think twice whether I would spend my money on flying this carrier or try an alternative. Go with Air Asia. They live up to those words. And there's many other airlines and other companies in Malaysia who do. And so do the people. This is why I'm so in love with this country. But at Malaysia Airlines, everyone, apart from... Um, one or two people, everybody failed to live up by those words. So this was it. This was my experience with Malaysia Airlines. I think I put it in a very fair way, and um, but I just wanted to give you a heads up and to tell you how I felt, how my experience was. Um, so I hope this video was helpful to, for you to make your decision whether you want to fly Malaysia Airlines or not. I won't again and um, However, I appreciate you watching my videos. If you liked it, please give it a like. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Um, there's so much more um, exciting, positive videos coming and I'm really excited to share them with you. So thanks for watching. Thanks for spending your time. And let me know in the comment section below what you think of Malaysia Airlines. What do you think? Was I treated right? Was I treated fair? Was that all okay? 
um, or did I do something wrong? So I'm happy to start a discussion with you in the comment section below. I try to engage with you as much as I can. Um, however, that was my experience with Malaysia Airlines. So thank you so much um, for watching and I'll see you soon on a different review.